Welcome everybody to the final and last installment of this uh, video series. I'll be going for part three, which is the unzipping of the secret folders. So this is uh, this is going to be reversing the actions that we did in part two. Part two is all about zipping the files up into a secret directory, and part three is all about unzipping those files from the dot secret directory and uh, putting those files back where they came from. So I'll be going over a workflow of how this entire script, this part should work, and some caveats about the assumptions and stuff. Um, once again, uh, if you haven't looked at part two and part one, I highly recommend you go do that because part three kind of relies on the fact that you have a proper zip folder directory um, set up. But it's okay if you want to work on part three first, it doesn't really matter. Um, also, I would say that if you want a written transcription of this thing, uh, definitely go check out the comment section of part three that's located in the uh, provided code. Um, Alex has spent a long time trying to write that up. And if you follow that word by word, uh, you should be fine. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. OK. So just like part two, uh, you only want to run part three if and only if the U flag is set. Remember, in part one, we set the U flag. And if we set the U flag, we also set the U path. Okay. U path is going to be the path of the directory of where the dot secret file should be uh, uh, listed. You only want to unzip the dot secret uh, directory inside this U path, directly inside this U path. All right. So um, you only want to run this entire script if and only if U flag is set. Dope. All right. Note that back in part two, we only ran part two when U flag was not set. So if U flag is set, we do not run part two, but we run part three, which is exactly what we want. Okay. So the overall workflow of part three is quite simple compared to part two. Um, so first thing you want to do is when you set the U flag, when you actually enter this if statement, you're going to want to check if there even is a secret folder. Is there even? Thank you, Lala. A secret folder, dot secret folder. And, um, is there even a dot secret folder say, yeah, in the U path? So okay. If there isn't a secret folder in the U path, what you're going to do is you want to print the appropriate echo, um, echo the appropriate error message, right? And this is important. You want to exit with a status of one. Okay, this is how we differentiate um, not being able to unzip a file versus other errors. So this is super important in terms of testing, like you exit with a status of one, exit one, exit one, not exit two, exit one. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So if there isn't a folder, why, if we can't unzip anything, so don't bother. Okay, so let's assume that we pass a check, okay? So now we're here, okay? Now all we need to do is iterate, okay? We iterate over the secret folder. Okay, every single file in the secret folder. Okay, now before I go on, let's go talk about some assumptions. Okay, uh, we've listed this, but then a, a couple of people have asked me about the, these assumptions. So, assumption number one you're allowed to assume that every single file inside the uh, secret file are zipped files generated from part two. So which, in other words, uh, is, is a zip file, uh, is a valid zip file generated from part two, um, which means we're not going to be sneaky. And then after you zip stuff up using part two, using the dash P or whatever command, uh, we're not going to be sneaky and chuck in a file that's randomly not a zip file inside. You don't need to worry about that. We're not, uh, we're not demons. Uh, we're not going, you don't need to take care of that edge case. Okay. Cool. So number two is you're allowed to assume that every single of uh, the, I'm sorry, the folder, the dot secret folder is never empty. Otherwise, it would have been deleted before. We'll go over the deleting part in part uh, once so I go back to workflow. But yeah, the secret folder is not empty, is, ne is never empty. Okay. These are the two assumptions you're allowed to make. Okay. And I guess it's one not assumption. Uh, I'll label this as assumptions. But another thing you don't need to worry about is that like you don't need to worry about passwords because uh, unzip is actually pretty cool. And if 
it detects, if it tries to unzip a file that was zipped up using a password, it will automatically prompt the user, it will stop running the process or whatever, and it will prompt the user automatically for a password. So you don't need to worry about that in your code, as long as you use the unzip command properly. That's fine. Okay? All right. Let's go back to workflow. Okay? So which is, okay. Whoops. So, which is why we're iterating over secret folder, we're allowed to assume that every single thing that we iterate over is a zip file, and we're allowed to assume that this is not empty, right? So this will always happen, okay? So, once we, once we um, so for every single zip file, all we need to do is unzip it, okay? We unzip it. So, there are two things you need to take care of in, uh, when you're unzipping, okay? Um, one, you need to unzip the folder and place it back at what, where it was previously before they were zipped, okay? So where do the files go when they were zipped, right? Well, check it. If I have a zip file in the dot secret directory, all right, f0.zip, sure. Where must this file have, where did this file originate from? Where does it have to originate from? Well, the only way that it was placed into this secret folder was if it was directly underneath this current branch, right? Yeah? Similarly, even if we have the dot secret, uh, unzipping the dot secret folder, right? Let's say that we had a dot secret folder, dot zip in here, right? The only way that this .secret.zip folder is within this .secret directory is if it was directly located underneath the current directory, right? So if we were to unzip this, we would get a uh, .secret after unzipping the current, this one, and then let's say we have another zip file, f0.zip, right? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, so that's for the path. Okay. So I would highly recommend you to realize like where you're unzipping from, where, what, what, hint, hint, how do we know the path of the secret folder, right? And then what, what's the uh, directory currently right above it? So this needs to be the destination, all right? And plus the name or whatever, okay? Furthermore, um, Unfortunately, unzip by default doesn't put it into wherever you want it to do. So you're going to have to specify a flag. Specify a flag that uh, allows you to uh, customize the destination of the, uh, the uh, resulting zip file, right? So I'll leave that up to you in the man pages. Okay. Furthermore, you're going to want to uh, quiet this. So you want to suppress warning messages. Okay. Okay. Finally, if this unzip thing, if it actually was was good, you want to remove the secret, the original, the, the zip file. Okay. So, um, so let's say that the file was zipped and we successfully unzip it right into where it was before we need to remove the zip file now i have searched i have not found a flag that allows you to automatically remove so what you got to do is i don't know if if you are able to find a flag if you do please tell me that would be awesome but um what what i did was i checked the um the resulting uh, error status code of unzip through a handy dandy um, uh, bash thing known as dollar sign uh, question mark. And depending on what this happened, I removed the original uh, secret uh, file, zip file, if this was good or not. Okay? So, all right, I guess two would be iteration, right? Okay, so make sure. Uh, and uh, bottom line, make sure you remove the uh, zip file after you're done unzipping it, okay? And the last thing is you need to do this. Last thing you need to do is after you finish unzipping, theoretically speaking, every single file inside the dot secret file should have been removed, right? It, it, it should have happened if, you, if all assumptions are true. But you need to check, 
maybe it's so some freak accident, the dot secret file isn't empty or whatever. Check if the dot secret file folder rather is empty. If it's empty, go ahead and remove that dot secret folder. All right, this is what I was referring to back in this one, right? So like you can assume the dot secret folder is not empty because if it was empty, we would have removed it previously, all right? So check the folder is not empty. You can do this in a number of ways. One is you can go to Google and literally Google how to tell if a directory is empty bash, right? And that will give you some pretty handy flags that you can use. Or you could actually just, you know, piggyback on the implementation of RMDIR. Um, I would think about this and say that, like, what happens if you try to use command RMDIR on a non-empty uh, folder and an empty folder, right? So, so that's, that, that's pretty cool. So compared to part two, part three is going to be relatively short. Uh, there's not much you need to take care of. All of the fancy dancy uh, zipping stuff and then like all this stuff is taken care of already in part two, right? Um, I would also caution you to a lot of, I, I notice a lot of students doing this, but uh, don't overthink this assignment. Um, every single point I have here should only be between two to four lines of code. Um, we're not expecting you to write a thousand line assignment for a uh, introductory bash class. That would be cruel and unusual of us. But at the same time, uh, we're, the, the project is designed to introduce you to how more complex um, scripting uh, scripts, I suppose, can be. And how you can, uh, the possibilities of writing your own script to do your own complex like tasks and automation and stuff. Imagine like not only do we have the scripting uh, script for zipping stuff up, but uh, other stuff that you want to automate on the daily, right? It'd be really, really cool. Um, I would say that I have a lot of respect for those uh, people who can actually bash properly and stuff. And then that's the whole point of this class, okay? All right, uh, definitely come to office hours if you need help. Uh, thank you so much for watching.